Are you okay, my dear Rick Saunders? Gregory. Eagle looking great, you're dull. And we're rolling, Gregory. Rick Saunders! Wow! Hey, great! Show us the skills that have made you a media darling. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, 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 welcome. To the Sarah Woods Be Loving Show. I'm still kind of finding it weird, and maybe you do too. Maybe you haven't thought of it this way, but our two most favorite, most popular ice cream flavors are beans. I'm Greg. He's Tom. It's your Saturday morning State Line show. Good morning, my good friend. Good morning. Are you a vanilla or a chocolate? What's your What's your preference when it comes to the ice cream flavor? Oh, I thought you were talking about green bean ice cream. <laughs> awesome. It's wonderful. Green bean ice cream, yes. Mm. No, um, chocolate, chocolate. I, you know, it it depends on the day. I, I love me a good scoop of good vanilla ice cream, but there are some days I oh. really want that chocolate. Yeah. All right, the twist is my favorite though. If I go to the Dairy yeah. Depot, which should be opening soon. Yes. yes. If I go to the Dairy Depot down on uh, North Second. I always get the twist, and they make it pretty big. It's like it's like this big. Yeah. It's bigger than my head. Like the commercial, a hamburger bigger in your head. It's, it's, it's about that big. There is a, and I think I shared it on the show a couple months ago. There is a food place, an ice cream place down in Tampa in Florida. And I follow their Instagram feed because the ice cream creations they make. Um, oh my gosh. And they give you, they, they, they do a twist cone that is like, it's like a foot and a, you know, almost a foot and a half tall. It's crazy how big they do these twist cones and hand to people over the counter. What do you do wow. with that? You go into a diabetic coma. <laughs> you share it with the whole family, I guess. But yeah. anyway, spoon. it is the 11th day of March, the year 2023, the latest it has ever been. In the history of mankind. And you made it. Congratulations. We're glad that you're here with us today. Yeah. Um, our big number of the week this week is a nice big number. So let's get to that. Our big number of the week this week is 1 billion. And the answer is cookies or crust. 1 billion with a B. Cookies or crust. Our current race to 10 has Joanne out in front by a score of seven to three, but Tom's not worried. He's going to catch her just like she caught him at the end of last year. Yeah, whatever. I think you were up eight to three or eight to four at one time against Joanne at, at the last race to 10, and she came back and caught you. So uh, it's your turn to do the, it's, it's your turn to make the comeback, Tom. It's your turn. Spring forward. Are you, are you already adjusting your clocks or are you wait until tonight? I'm going to get up at uh, 2 o'clock and do it then because I want to be right. I, I, I don't want to cheat the system or anything like that. I sent you my uh, thing, by the way. I got it. I got it. You got it. All yeah. right. Good enough. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's funny. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my mother-in-law under the bus because she, oh, hey. she loves me and I love her. And I think this is hilarious. And uh, she'll think it's funny, too, though. On Thursday... On Thursday, she had my wife help her put all of her clocks ahead one hour. Or, yeah, ahead one mm -hmm. hour. Because we're springing forward this weekend. This is spring. Mm -hmm. Spring forward. Yeah. Losing that hour for the weekend. Uh, okay, so I understand why she does it. Get herself used to it for the next stuff. Maybe her phone won't reflect that. Her well, phone won't because you can't, you, you can't. Because if you changed it to Eastern Standard Time, it would. We right. have to change it back. I have a clock radio in my house. I used to I used to not be able to change the time on it, so I had to change the time zone when it was spring forward or fall back time. That's funny. <laughs> That's how I that was my way of getting around this the fact that I couldn't change the actual time on the clock anymore because of the goofy age of the clock or whatever. But I, I the time zone. Thought we were done with this. Can we be done with it? Please. Can we know. be done with it? Here's the thing. We are I think we are done with it. I think after we spring ahead, that's it. We're not, we're no longer falling behind, falling back, right? We, well, one part of government, I think, passed it, but the other one didn't yet. Okay. I, forget, I think the, 
I think the House passed a bill, passed a bill getting rid of it, but the Senate hasn't accepted yet. And we don't want the Senate to because the House passed it saying we should stick to daylight savings time instead of daylight standard time. It's like, no, spring forward and then stop. Leave it. No, 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 no. You fall back and stop because it's central daylight standard time is what we are right now. Okay. When we spring forward, then we're going to daylight savings. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Right. Anyway, just and that's the thing that drives me nuts. And they do it. And now, now, from us, from the perspective of, I used to be the commissioner of our softball league, right? And, um, I loved the extra hour at night because we could play both of our games. It was always a doubleheader. We could play both of our games and get them in by eight o'clock, eight fifteen, and because the sun was still. Up till literally 845, 850, you could still, eh, right about that time, it's starting to get dark. So, but we always got our games in. So, I like it from that perspective. We didn't have to start at five, five o'clock. Um, but if we don't, if we if we were to stay on central uh, standard time, then we would have to do that start early or not have double headers, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, it's time that's a small thing. It's time, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, time for what? Got a handful of shout outs real quick before we get to our guest from Rock House Kids. We want to say hi to Nikki. She's going to be coming on the screen here in just a little bit. Um, shout outs this week. Last weekend was uh, Harlem High School's high school musical, and they did Xanadu. Did you ever see Xanadu with Olivia? No, Newton? but I love, I love the song by Olivia Newton John. I never Great saw the music. movie, though. Goofy is goofy is ever story. Uh, the storyline is just goofy is all get out. It's funny, it's fun, and um. Kudos. Well, I haven't seen it. So don't spoil it for me. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it, it, there's even a part of the musical where they crack a joke on themselves. Let's just throw in a popular song here, even though it doesn't make sense to the story. And they just do the song. You know, it's got one of those kind of things. It's like, yeah, I love that. Like a fourth wall thing. I, yes. I, I love that. Yes. Very fun. Xanadu, Harlem High School Theater Department. Kudos. Way to go. Um, not their fault. But at some point between between um, late Saturday and sometime during the day on Sunday, or, uh, it might have been late Sunday. I got a little I got a little bug, and it knocked me out for Monday night, all day Tuesday, most of the day Wednesday. There's a there, uh, our buddies over at WROK was talking about the fact that Illinois got a little flu bug bouncing around the state, and apparently that hit me uh, on Monday night. So. My Tuesday and Wednesday were pretty much shot, um, but felt better on Thursday and uh, had a lot going on on Thursday and Friday. I want to give a shout out to the folks at 815 Outside. They've been organizing a bunch of uh, local area walks. Meet at the Rockford sign downtown and we're going to do a walk on the, around the riverfront. Meet at this park and we're going to check out the you know, Black Hawk Springs. And they're, they're doing things a couple, sometimes a couple times a week. So... Uh, if you want to get out and enjoy some nature and meet some new folks around Rockford, check out 815 Outside. Just do a search for hashtag 815 Outside and you'll find their group. A nice bunch of people. Um, also, a quick shout out to Next Rockford, another group that I joined for this year. And uh, we had a, a get together at the Embassy Suites, 12th floor of Embassy Suites. This was my first visit to the new Embassy Suites downtown Rockford. The view over downtown is really cool from up there. Um, had a great talk from Ron Kluwer about uh, creating strong towns and where Rockford was, where Rockford is now, and how much work we still have to do to help make Rockford be a better, stronger town. Uh, really appreciated the information that he shared. Uh, and then we had, of course, that fun little snow deal on Thursday night, which canceled a whole lot of stuff for Thursday night but fell in such a time frame that most of the stuff on Friday still happened. Uh, with school, with school, and the schools weren't canceled on Friday because it was most of the snow fall, fell overnight and was plowed away. So, um, yeah, but it was nice, heavy snow. So it, it was just, um, shove it out of the way. I, yeah. It was just kind of done. I don't know. <laughs> fell and stuck. It just fell and stuck. Uh, yeah. Um, easy to remove is what I'm trying to say. It was yeah. easy to remove. Exactly what happened. So our LinkedIn lunch at Machine Shed yesterday was awesome. Uh, our good buddy Alex Gary was our presenter, and he is now at Midway Village Museum. Perfect role for him. Uh, loves history, 
And uh, the, the connections he has are going to do a lot of great things to bring more people into Midway Village Museum. One of the things he talked about, Tom, was uh, putting together, he wants to put together a Hall of Fame wall with like cards, not just of sports people, but other halls of fame. There's a guy who's in the, like from Rockford area, who's like in the tow truck Hall of Fame. And there's a Fastener Hall of Fame. And there's all these different halls of fames where he's got, so far he's got like 60 different Rockford area folks who have are somehow some way in a hall of fame of something. And, wow. uh, and I loved his idea of, of like once a month having a setup, you know, uh, celebrating this person who's in the hall of fame of this. And here's why boom next he's got 60 of them. So he's got five years worth already. <laughs> he can do this Ooh. every month for five years and he's good to go. So um, one wow. of the things that he talked about yesterday. So any who any, that's my limited shout outs for this week. Any shout outs for you that you want to throw out there? Well, there's a lot of things, but we don't have time for it. Uh, I wanted to talk Packer football real quick, but uh, that's not really a shout out. That's yeah. Let's uh, do that after you know. our guest. We'll talk some Packers and bears. Okay. They have some news to All share. Right. So we'll do that. Our guest is from rock house kids and uh, she hasn't been there real long but she's got an important role and uh, nikki i want to thank you for joining us today how are you thank you for having me i'm doing really well this morning awesome. how about you both awesome. i'm so doing all right yeah what is it that your yeah. role is now at rock house kids and what does rock house kids do for those who don't know Sure, absolutely. Um, so my role is, um, my official title is outreach coordinator, but I do, um, you know, kind of development coordination as well. So I'm in charge of, um, you know, making the community familiar with Rock House. Um, I'm in charge of the fundraisers, um, donations, things like that. Um, so I've been there a few months now, so I'm very excited. And for those of you who don't know, yes, Rock House Kids. So we work with inner city kids. We have evening programs Monday through Thursday. And on the on Mondays and Wednesdays, we have our littles um, who are six, they usually ages six, so like first grade through sixth grade. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have our teens, uh, seventh through 12th grade. And we um, provide a hot meal for them. That's what we usually start the night with. Um, you know, it's a safe environment where they're able to just be kids. So we, once we feed them, then we have games, Bible teaching, singing, dancing. Um, we teach them life skills. So we have CPR, communication, um, self-awareness, coping mechanisms, things like that. Uh, we also take them on field trips throughout the year. So some of them are educational, some of them are recreational, but we just try to get them you know, excited about learning. And um, we also provide basic life essentials whenever they're needed. So socks, underwear, hygiene products. And then once the weather starts getting cold, we do provide a winter coat for each child that we serve. And um, snow boots, shoes, anything like that that they need. When school starts, we provide backpacks, school supplies. We do the backpacks actually twice a year, um, just in case they've lost one. And then we have, um, let's see what else, throughout the year, we, we do give blankets out once it starts getting cold as well. We do that twice a month, one for the littles and then one for the teens. Um, we do that every month throughout the winter. We kind of start with the thinner blankets when it's fall and then they get warmer as we get through the winter and it gets colder. Um, and then at the end of each night that we have programmed, the kids also, we give them a bag full of kid-friendly food. So it's food that they don't have to prepare. Um, so it's ready to eat to, when they open to hopefully tide them over until they're with us again. So that's, that's awesome. primarily what we do. <laughs> that's awesome. And, and now, have you been around long enough to know, did you meet and get to know Dola Gregory, who started Rock House Kids? You know, I haven't met Dola. So she retired, I believe, a couple of years ago. And years. I, yeah. I haven't, yeah, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting her. Dola was quite the dynamo. And for her to start this yeah. and grow it to the point where she did is really uh, one of those incredible Rockford success stories. And, really? and it's just amazing what she did. And we were talking yesterday at linked lunch about the fact that uh, in our little conversations, our side conversations yesterday, um, I was talking with our good friend, Paul Iverson uh, from Iverson painting. And uh, I was mentioning how, you know, a lot of times an organization so like rock house kids or something similar, when a founder decides they need, you know, they're going to retire, they need to move on and do something else. A lot of times that transition 
is the death of the organization. It's a very, it's a, it's a very fragile time for an organization to go from founding, founding person to next leader. And yeah. the transition that went from Dola to D is another incredible Rockford success story uh, yeah. because Dola built this incredible foundation that's allowed D to build in such ways that I'm sure even Dola never imagined in her wildest dreams. So uh, kudos to you for becoming a part of D's team over there. Yeah. Um, uh, what kind of a, between staff and volunteers, what uh, what kind of a staff and volunteer situation do you currently have at Rock House Kids? So right now we have eight staff members, uh, eight full time staff members, and um, and then as far as volunteers go, we need on uh, we have some volunteers that are there during the day um, to kind of do behind the scenes work. They get the bags ready for the kids for the with the food that we give out at night. Um, they do our newsletters, all kinds of things like that. So we have a wonderful team of volunteers that comes in during the day throughout the week to help with those kinds of things. And then in the evenings, we have a wonderful, wonderful group of volunteers. We need about 26 per evening when we have the littles because we do average about 75 to 100 littles per night. Um, and then we have, so we try to have at least three to four um, mentors, we call them per grade to help with the, the kids. And then for the teens, we average about 30 to 40 kids per night. So um, on those nights, we, we'd like to have a minimum of four volunteers, um, preferably closer to eight on the teen nights. Um, we are struggling a little bit with uh, volunteer staff. We do need additional right now, our teens. Unfortunately, we don't have Thursdays running at the moment. Um, it's the first time we've had four nights since 2014. And so uh, having to shut down one night for the teens is really not good. <laughs> so we are trying to get that back up and running as quickly as possible. So we need men primarily for the teen boys, but you know, we need both men and women that can help on Thursday nights on a consistent basis. You know, one thing that's really important to our kids is consistency. You know, they learn to trust and they get attached to folks. So, um, you know, we're looking for kind of long-term commitments, whether it's one night a week or every other week, once a month, something like that, you know, whatever folks are able to do is is much appreciated and so right now but we do have quite a few volunteers that currently help out i'm looking at the rockhousekids.org webpage and you can see at the top bar you've got <laughs> home about us upcoming events news volunteer and donate uh, for those who are would like to volunteer you've got information right there on program volunteers, drivers, kitchen helpers, helping behind the scenes. Uh, if, if volunteering is just not in the cards for you, please consider donating. Um, actually, up the top of your screen, we've got a little uh, tiny URL that you can try that on your phone and see if that takes you to their donate page. It's supposed to. <laughs> I didn't test it, so I'm not exactly sure if it's going to work, but it should. Uh, and then there's a drop down on the website, uh, rockhousekids.org donate give once give monthly be a volunteer there's a bunch of information all right there on this beautiful beautiful website for rock house kids so um I, i'm pretty excited i'm sure you are too about the uh, recent um uh announcement of the matching donation you guys uh, achieved and the expansion that's coming up Absolutely. So once, so we're hoping and praying that our expansion will be done by the end of this year. So we've already begun work on that area. So the building is, we own the entire building. And so it's kind of the back half of the building that's undeveloped. So um, we are, we need, you know, kind of electrical, all that kind of stuff um, to be put in. And so we're hoping everything will be complete by the end of the year. We are going to have, we currently have um, a, a gym area in there that we're going to put epoxy floor down. We're going to kind of turn it into, it'll still have two half court basketball um, for the kids that they love that, but we also use, it's kind of a multi-purpose room. We use it for a lot of different games and things like that for the kids. And then once it's done, we're going to have a projection screen and things like that. So we're hoping to have movie nights on Fridays, you know, as often as we can to get the kids in there and off the streets. So we do have, um, 
once once the expansion is complete, we are going to have the space to be able to have all age groups all four nights a week. So we're really, really excited about that. It's another reason that it's really important for us to um, start building our volunteer base. And, you know, any help that is able to be given is very much appreciated. And um, and then for donating, we are looking at, once we do have that, um, potentially hiring a few more people as well to help um, help with that in the evenings. So we're, we're really excited about that. Nice. For, for I know up until about... Uh, three or four years ago, there was another business in the back part of this building. It and was. I forget exactly what they did, but the owner of that business, I believe, is the one that helped kind of somewhat donate or sell very, very reasonably to, back to Rock House Kids the entire building. Uh, so that whole he little- did. He donated the the back the back area that was being used for his business. He donated that to us. That's yes, awesome. that's awesome. So you've got you've got space. Some more space would be great. And right now, the biggest need more volunteers so that Thursday night programs can get back up and running again. Um, exactly. Any, yeah, well, I have a couple of questions before yep. we go. Uh, Nikki, the time frame for uh, Thursday night's volunteering, what is it like five to nine? Is it six oh, to eight? That's what a is great that? question. Yeah, um, it's five to eight. You know, we're pretty flexible. We do have some volunteers with work schedules and things like that, that they aren't able to come until like 5.30, 5.45. And that's perfectly fine as well. You know, we are pretty flexible, mm -hmm. but the kids start arriving about 5 p.m., and then they're there until 8 p.m. So that's pretty much the time frame that we're looking for. And then we do have the field trips, like I said, um, at least once a month. We do one for the um, older kids and one for the little kids. And so most of those are just a few hours long, you know, three to five hours. There, We do a couple day trips throughout the year. Um, that we're always looking for volunteers to help with. Mm -hmm. And then um, we do go to camp with the little kids in the summertime. It's a two and a half day, just a weekend camp. And then for the teens, we do a winter camp. So those things are the only kind of out of scope out of our normal evening programs that we would need folks for as well. All right. My second question, you kind of answered it. I was going to say the highest age group of the kids and it, you did, you did say um, teens, meaning high schoolers, probably up to 12th grade, right? Correct. Yeah. I, what I was, the reason I was asking that is uh, donating clothes. For some reason, we always have a lot of clothes and we do donate a lot of clothes. I get them from different people. We have a friend who goes to Chicago with a, uh, donations like every other week and he takes clothes, he takes food items or whatever. So uh, keeping them locally is not a problem because we take an awful lot to them. So what is the size? I mean, 3XL, 2XL, 1XL. Do you have a lot of kids that may be big, big seniors, you know? We do, yes. And honestly, um, the coats usually we that is a that is a big thing. And um, sweatshirts, you know, warmer items during this during the winter time right. are are right. always needed and appreciated. So, and we do have up to, I, I would say right now probably up to a three XL. Yeah, and those are yeah. the the ones that yeah we don't get those very often. So those are, those sizes are much appreciated. That's good to know because that's what I wear. I wear a three XL, big shoulders, whatever. And I'm always looking to get rid of a lot of clothes, good stuff. You know, I mean, I, don't worry, they're not shop rags, but, yes. but <laughs> I'm, I'm always looking for an outlet for that. And that's when I usually, we send them over to, his name's Al, send him over to Al. He takes them to Chicago and people love it, but we send a lot of stuff. So I think maybe I'm going to start sending them your way. That would be great. And in, and anything we don't use too or can't use, um, we always repurpose as well. So like we will, Absolutely, our yeah. food, our hot meals that we have, um, because we only have a warming kitchen, we cannot keep any leftover foods that we have for any extended period of time. So we work with a church down the road, Pastor Wayne, um, he feeds homeless. So he'll come mm -hmm. daily and, and, and pick up any of the leftovers that we have for the hot meals. And then same thing with clothing, anything that we cannot use, we will redonate to, to those who could. I love it. Yeah. And no waste, no waste. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. I, uh, I shared your post here earlier about the Big Eats tour uh, a couple months ago. It was at uh, uh, a Backyard uh, Grill in, 
in McChesney Park. So kudos to those folks for supporting Rock House Kids. The next one, March 22nd at Jessica's. We all love Jessica's. Yes. Oh, yeah. Jessica's. Yes, we're very excited. Uh, Jessica is off of uh, 251 and Hananiga Road. That's technically Roscoe, I believe, right? So it is. Uh, it is. Restaurant. And that is on March 22nd. All day long, 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. You just let people know when you walk in, you're there to support Rock House Kids. That's pretty much it, right? It is. Yep. As and when you do that, they will donate 15% of your check back to us. So anybody wants to meet me, I will be there um, myself as well with some littles from 10 to 1130, somewhere around, around there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I, I love that you call them littles. You're talking <laughs> about kids, right? <laughs> the littles. The littles. I love that. It's so cute. They graduate to bigs later. Oh, yeah, yes. they do. It doesn't take them long to get taller than me either. So I call them littles as long as possible. <laughs> littles, middles, and bigs. There you go. Yes. Nikki's all of about five foot four, I think. If I'm about <laughs> with heels. <laughs> five, five, six with the hair thing going on. Yes, I got to get as much height as possible. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, you have been extremely informative today, Nikki. And uh, if there, is there anything that we didn't ask you about today that you wanted to make sure that we get out about what you do at Rock House Kids or maybe anything else? Um, just the last couple of things. So, um, as far as food goes, uh, Greg, you, when you pulled up our website, you were kind of showing it a little bit. We do put out a wish list, um, things that are, that we're in need of on a monthly basis yeah. that kind of goes over, you know, what we're looking for that month. We do post that on our website and on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all those good things, um, monthly. And then, um, so that's kind of, if you're wondering what we're in most need of at that specific time, we're always. I'm not sure if you can read this time. Um, but at the top of the March wish, wish list is Frank's Red Hot Sauce. Yes. <laughs> we are big hot sauce people over at Rock House Kids. So the kids love it. The adults love it. So, yes, we are always in need of Frank's. <laughs> um, and then we do have, um, Greg, you mentioned the Jessica's, the Big Eats tour. We do have, you can see on our upcoming events there, we do have our Rock and Bowl event coming up as well. Um, we do two kind of fundraisers like that per year. So we do the Rock and Bowl, and then we have Streets and Suites in September. Now, the one, Streets and Suites, I am just gearing up to start doing table sponsorships. So if anyone is interested in table sponsorships, please reach out. Um, Greg, I'm not sure if we're going to put my contact information or if you want me to just shout it out right now. Yeah, I would. I put the link to the website in the in the uh, in the chat or in the captions here or in the chat. So that should be on YouTube and Facebook. Perfect. This doesn't do, uh, currently Restream does not put our comments and stuff on the LinkedIn portion of our show, but it's all, that's one of the things we do love about Restream is with one click, we're on LinkedIn streaming live, Facebook streaming live, YouTube streaming live, and a tweet goes out to Twitter that says, hey, we're streaming live now, come watch us. So awesome. that's out there right now. So rockhousekids.org, all the contact information you need is right there. Um, the Big Eats tour, March 22nd. There's a volunteer appreciation dinner coming up. There's a Portillo's <laughs> Big Eats tour date on in April. And there's even a, a bowling fundraiser at Park Lanes coming up in May. So lots of cool stuff for Rock House Kids to support what you guys do. All right. Um, Nikki, again, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, at some point, we're definitely going to have to have you present at a linked lunch. So we'll talk about that later. That would be awesome. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate have a great it. Rest of your weekend. Have a good day. Nice. There goes Nikki from Rock House Kids, <laughs> standing by out at Pause Humane Society. Hello, Joanne. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning. How'd you survive the snow, hon? You doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing fine. I worked. On Thursday, I have men that come. They they come out and, and plow you out, and you're all good to go. While I'm sleeping, <laughs> and I do have, I do have a four wheel drive truck, or <clears throat> I don't know what all wheel drive called. SUV. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Well, we've got some uh, we got some Packers Bears talk to do that I think we'll probably we, we'll probably save here just a little you bit. Put me on backstage again. <laughs> well, I, I, I tried this week to limit the stories and stick to just random stuff for uh, information that you did not know prior to this show. So um, our SMS info portion 
of our show, we like to say, is unofficially brought to you by Altruize. Remember, Altruize is the app that enables volunteers to track and verify and maintain their own community service data for a lifetime. Altruize, tell a better story. Live a better life. It's Sock Monkey Madness Day today at Midway Village Museum Center. Lots I was going to bring a sock monkey and I didn't re remember. I'm you know, sorry. I see, I see sock monkeys all over the place. And I see them at the knockoffs uh, at the dollar store. Those are not. Those It says <laughs> made in China. I'm you sorry, have to make no. them. You have to make them with official Nelson Mill knitting socks. Nelson, the socks from Nelson Mill. Right. Is that right, right. Nelson? Yeah. Well, at Nelson Am Knitting I saying, Company, I know that much, yeah. Nelson Knitting Company, I'm sorry. The no, that's I fine, but, but if it says made in China, that's not an official sock Don't monkey. That's that. not <laughs> uh, not sure how those got into Rockford, but they were not official. Well, I've, I've seen it for years, made in China, and this is so, yeah. <laughs> so that's the sock big monkey. deal this weekend, yeah. Midway Village Museum Center. Sock. It's only today, so yeah. if you sleep and don't go, you're out of luck. Uh, 9 a.m., it's $12 for adults, $8 for kids. The importance of the iconic Sock Monkey to Rockford's Industrial Pass is celebrated today. Uh, visitors will be able to sew their own Sock Monkey with guided instruction and tour the exhibit, The Missing Link, Sock Monkeys and Rockford's industrial past. Very, very interesting stuff at Midway Village Museum Center, Guilford Road in Rockford. And uh, speaking of the past, do you remember the last time you used a floppy disk for your computer? <laughs> 90s? I don't, I don't really use my computer anymore. Okay, yeah, because you're on the iPad and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, Sony... Uh, Sony was the last manufacturer to actually make floppy disks. They stopped making them in 2011. Here are some things that floppy disks are still used in. Check this out. Um, Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. Mm. Although they're, they're starting to phase those out, but there's still some using that. The San Francisco City subway system is still run using floppy disks. Huh. The... There's a whole lot of medical equipment and embroidery machines. If you have someone, if you know someone who does embroidery and has some of the older machines, those all run off of floppy disks. And maybe the scariest one of all, there are still airplanes being run off of <laughs> floppy disk technology. We're talking the Airbus A320, Boeing 747s and 767s. Some of those are still using floppy disks. Not all right. All right. So let me just say this: I don't trust technology. I don't try from from a from a DJ standpoint, from a trivia standpoint. Every time I have to rely on something that's not hardwired, something that I realize floppy disks are kind of the same thing. It's the same thing as the thumb drive, but I much prefer to have something physical to plug in. To be able to use it rather than log on to someone's uh, Wi-Fi or something along those lines. I understand why they still do. And if it's working, it's working. As long as you can still get the technology, you have to upgrade. But I think the reason they do that is because they just too much of a task to, we'll wait till it ends. Then we'll phase it out and then move on to the stuff. Rather than transfer everything that we have, it's right. cost prohibitive and time prohibitive. Well, now that we mentioned it. Maybe you'll be, maybe you'll see one here in the not too distant future. And be like, oh, look at that! They're still using floppy disks for that technology. Yeah, kind of wild. I still have quite a few of them, but I can't access them because yeah. I don't have it on my computer. No more machines to play them. Um, all right, here's a bunch of randoms, yeah. and a lot of these involve big numbers that are not our big number of the week. Amazon uh, planning to expand. Uh, over 150 same-day delivery centers in the coming years, which focused on delivering uh, the site's top 100,000 items. That's right. They don't have a top 100. They don't have a top 1,000. They have a top 100,000 items, and they're going to try to have those at same-day delivery centers at 150 or so locations across the U.S. to be, boom, quick. Isn't uh, that like being um, 437th in your class of 450? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was. 
It's crazy, man. Uh, Ford, last year, the year 2022, Ford Motor Company, they were granted 1,342 U.S. patents, according to NPR. They are trying to stay on the cutting edge of technology and stuff, and they, they're, they're, they're doing it. Watch out for Ford to make a comeback if you want to consider it a comeback, which they might say comeback. Uh, speaking of comeback, GM needs to make a comeback. General Motors, reportedly, they're only building a dozen Hummer EV uh, electronic vehicles per day. And that's way slower than their anticipated rollout because they have a waiting list of about 80,000 people. Do you, you can do the math. How long it takes to catch up to 80,000 when you're only doing 12 per day? It's probably beyond our life. <laughs> um, there was a 25th anniversary screening of the Titanic movie. Were either of you big fans of the Titanic movie? I was. I, I liked it. It's not one that I, I would... I'm not going to ever see it again, probably. I didn't see it twice. I saw it once. It was great. But mostly for me, not for the romantic side of it, I don't care, because all of that is Hollywood license anyway. I wanted to see the ship. I wanted to see the era. I wanted to see the backstory. I wanted to see just everything and see how accurate it was. It was a great movie. It was a great movie. How about you, Joanne? Did you like the movie? I've seen it several times. I didn't yeah. go back to see. I thought it was on 3D. They did when some special, back. yeah, they did some special re-release of it. Well, there was a 25th anniversary screening in Rio, Rio de Janeiro. And it totally went viral because the theater flooded. <laughs> oh my. It was not, it was not planned. It was not supposed to be immersive. It was not intentional. The theater flooded during the screening of Titanic. <laughs> Oh, wow. Now, this, is, this is off the, well, it's the same subject, but when we went to see the Titanic, the heat went out in the theater. Yeah. So we were freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Jack so, hanging on to the door. You think yeah. cool. <laughs> it was, it was kind of like everyone, we getting their coats on and they were like, and it was like, hmm. <laughs> kind of too realistic. You're not cold. You don't know cold. Um, <laughs> uh, two more movie things. Well, well, one more movie thing. Creed 3 is out now. They had a domestic box office of $58.6 million for its opening debut. That exceeded expectations, according to MGM. The biggest opening ever for a sports film. $58.6 million. I've heard the critics love it. And if you're a fan of Rocky or the Rocky okay. movie. Yeah, Apollo Creed. I, I'm thinking the music group Creed. Wait a minute, what? Yeah. Creed 3. Creed 1 and 2, I guess, were okay. This one apparently is even better. So uh, I watched Godfather last night for the first time in a long, long time. And for those who know about Godfather movies, Godfather 1 was amazing. Godfather, Godfather 2 was even more is like one of the best movies ever made. It's like on the top three of a lot of critics of best movies ever made. Right. Apparently Creed 3 is better than Creed 1 and 2 and might be worth the uh, <coughs> worth the, the trip in. The problem with the whole Rocky series, I saw Rocky in 1977, I guess it was, and that iconic, you know, on the step, uh, the, the steps of um, whatever it was, the the Philadelphia, Mint, I think it was, or whatever, or the yeah. museum or something, whatever. Anyway, um, that was great. Da -da -da, you know, whatever. After that, I think I might have seen Rocky 2 and probably Rocker, Rocky 3, whichever one had Clubber Lang. Was that three, Mr. Uh, T? Well, because number two, you know, Rocky 2, he Rocky came back to rematch. Apollo, Apollo Creed, right? Yeah, Rocky 2 was like the rematch, right? Oh, right. Rocky three was that Mr. T or was that the Russian? It might have been Ivan Drago, the Russian. Oh, but nonetheless, I was done after that. Now you now what are we up to with all the sequels and with all the, everything else and even a prequel? What are we up to now? About ten, eight, nine, ten. Now that well, you throw the Creed movies, yeah. The Creed's in there. Well, yeah. but the whole series. Because if you throw the oh. Creeds in there, that's part of the series. Yeah. So oh, it okay. like, it's like a it's like um um what do you call like it? Like a never-ending story. Like a spin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a spin-off, is what it is. If you use TV terms. Anyway, I'm I'm done with it. Just like the whole Batman thing. I, I 
uh, Star Wars, Spider-Man, Cinderella's. How many of them can you do? How many different angles can you tell it from? Bring on the original stories. Show us something original. Too much for me. You know, I always had this idea, and, and I think somebody might have stolen my idea. The Retroplex, where all you show are older movies. Mm -hmm. Like, go ahead and re-show Caddyshack for two weeks. And it's like six bucks or something. Give people a break. And then you can do dinner and a movie. And you give them a hot dog, chips, and a water for five bucks. You know, and if you want to get popcorn in your pop or whatever, you can spend an extra six or eight or ten bucks. Or whatever. I think it'd be a great idea. I could see, I could see like Showplace, uh, Show, Showplace uh, 16 turning into like half of it retroplex, half of it new releases. That'd be kind of a... Uh, yeah. I mean, how many times? There are so many movies I have not seen. You Was know? it Nordstone used to show older movies down in the basement? Or is that before everyone's time? North Town? Where, where was yeah. it? Yeah, North Town. Oh, that North Town. Yeah. No, they would. Here's what they did. It was a dollar I theater for a while. All the time. It was a dollar theater. Then it became a dollar thir uh, dollar fifty theater. And I have a really interesting story about that probably for another time. But um, we um, we used to. Yeah, exactly. We used to go to that all the time. With having three kids, uh, it, uh, you know, five bucks or or seven fifty if it was a buck fifty, whatever. And it was in their theaters. Yes, they had like six theaters down there, and they weren't older movies. What they were were they were like second releases. Like like for example, um, let's just say Rocky. Rocky's been out for three months. Well, now it's going to come to Northtown. Now it's, so it's still in it. Run. It's still in its run. It's still a new movie, not even three, four, five, six months old, but but it's not like The Wizard of Oz or anything like that. That was my idea. In fact, it was my idea to do it with uh, with Northtown. I don't know what's being occupied there. I don't either. I don't anything. I in rumor say, is it? It well, was probably is... 1997, the last time I did a movie at Northtown. <laughs> um, I... I, well, that's why I said I didn't. The, I knew it was a long time ago. You got rumors can... about what's in there, Tom? I can tell you exactly the last time I did oh, a movie. Um, it was 2004. Um, and at Northtown? At Northtown. It was 2004. Here's how I know. This is the interesting story. I'll be quick. I had had my motorcycle accident in um, 2004, March 20th of 2004. August. It was Labor Day weekend. I sold my motorcycle. Not the one I crashed. The one I had upgraded from. I'd sold it for 220 bucks. I bought it for 400. I sold it for 220 like six years later. The guy bought it on Sunday afternoon and we were a little cash poor at the time. He gave me $220 cash. And I'm like, we're going to a movie and we're getting popcorn. <laughs> the last time we went there because shortly after that it closed and then McChesney Park took over with the dollar theaters or they were still doing it at the yeah. time. They were, they were all doing it at the time. So that was my interesting little story. So I remember all right. that. All right. Um, this is probably going to cost you more than a dollar. Um, did you, uh -oh. uh, did you, have you ever experienced the Dole Whip at Disneyland or Disney World? I've had Dole Whip before. Dole Whip. Yeah. Uh, not at <laughs> Disneyland. Never been to Disney. But they have Dole Whip at uh, Dairy Depot. Or at least oh. they used to. Soft serve and pineapple combo. Very yep. much loved at Disneyland and Disney World. It is coming to a grocery store near you. The official Disney Dole Whip. Watch for that. Mm. If you're a big fan of that and be disappointed, probably highly disappointed when you realize it doesn't quite taste the same as it does when you're in the hot Florida sun or the hot Southern California sun. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's for the lactose intolerant and it's for the people who do not <laughs> want sugar. So. And this is going to have a lot of sugar in it. Sunny yeah, maybe, D. Okay, maybe, yeah. Sunny D's getting into cocktails. A canned vodka seltzer at select Walmart locations this month. They're trying out a Sunny D cocktail. Oh yeah, mm. that's, that's that's just you know, you <laughs> know what Sunny D. Sunny D has always been um, to me related to kids. When you think of Sunny D, you think of kids. Now Sunny D with vodka. What happens if mom and dad have a little Sunny D in the fridge with a little vodka in it? And the kid just sees Sunny D. Oh, cool. It's in a yeah. can now. Uh, uh, uh. No, no, bad. Bad, bad marketing in my in my estimation. 
Be very, it'll put you to sleep. Speaking of sleep, Americans not getting enough sleep, according to a study uh, the uh, that found that, yes, as Americans as a whole, we're just not getting enough sleep. One of the solutions being proposed, just watch the Academy Awards. You'll be out in no time. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> and finally, a German man called police to report that someone <laughs> broke into his house and while there, cleaned the inside of the fridge, washed his dishes, vacuumed, and left fresh baked cookies on his kitchen table. How dare they? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So you if you're out there, my address is... <laughs> I have a theory on this one too. I think uh, I think the lady next door, a couple doors down, has been pining for him for years, and finally decided, "Darn it, I'm going to show him why I should be his wife." Busted into his house and did all these things while he was asleep. That's my theory. Yeah. They, nothing was stolen. No, he didn't report anything stolen. Just that someone broke in and did all these nice things in his house. It's called cleaning fairies. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe 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 he hired someone to do this and forgot. I don't know. Oh, there you go. There you go. I don't know. But there's uh, there's your random. It could have been like a, um, someone had like a, a you know like they do um, birthday things. Was that maybe it was like a gift from a family member or something? <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe it was his mom or something. Okay. Now, so you say broke in. Did that mean like crawled through a window or just knew the code, had a key? You know, because it's not breaking in if you have the code or if you it is technically you're, you're not supposed to if be there. If anyone wants to come to my house and clean. <laughs> I'm putting this in the chat so people can search for it and maybe they can find more details out for us. Right? Find out more about the German man that called police and reported someone doing all these things into his house. That's, how yeah. dare they? <laughs> how dare they? All right. There's our fun. If you're here to clean my house, come on in. <laughs> if you're here to tell me insurance, go away. What do you charge? Nothing? Come on in. That's no. right. I I probably think it was someone who was doing it as a, a nice gesture. Yeah. Type thing. yeah. Maybe it was his mom. Maybe he's tired member. of Billy being a pig, you know? If you want to do something nice, we already mentioned the Rock House Kids donation QR code at the top of the screen. We also uh, are letting you give us donuts. Go ahead and support our stream by buying us donuts. You're, you're happy to do that. Oh, Thank absolutely. And, and and if Thank you, you really want to pop some donuts on my counter. There you go. And if you really want to do something, really, really something, buy us all some new headphones. That'd be wonderful. Wouldn't it be awesome if we all wore matching headphones? I don't want new headphones. I like the ones I have. You well, can have mine. The the ones on the screen, they're only 20 bucks. And uh, we do the show for free. If you want to be a generous and throw us something like that, that would be wonderful. It didn't say by Greg and Tom. It doesn't say anything about Joanne. <laughs> you never I wear headphones. I don't know if you can. Well, I might wear them if I owned them. Right, right. This is true. This is I bet true. you got but you so, have a little plug in thing. Yeah, I'm like put on the third base again. Now, the the people around you are like hearing the show, though, so they might not like it if you're wearing headphones and not broadcasting our talking while you're sitting there at pause. Why, you think they want to hear about the Packers? <laughs> Good point. Uh, ladies, do you want to hear about the Packers? They aren't even listening to me. They're busy. <laughs> They're busy. They're... Did you want to hear about the Packers? She said, no, not so much. And I, wow. I want to encourage though. I want to encourage you, Tom and Joanne. I want to encourage you. The, for some reason, the screen actually can tell us if someone scanned the QR code. And as of now, eight people have already scanned one of the QR codes we just put up. So thank How you. Many? Thank you. That's awesome. How many? Eight people. Okay. Eight I thought people. you said 80 and I was going to go fall off my chair for them. It doesn't tell me how many, which which QR code they scanned, but the donate to RHK has been up the whole show up in the top corner. And then the uh, the donut one was up for just a couple of seconds. And then the headphones up was just a couple of seconds. And if people- So I'm not getting donuts neither? I, well, I don't know. I, if someone buys us donuts, maybe we'll all have donuts next week. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> how do I? How do we get the donuts to us? Yeah, gonna, really, that's what I'm thinking. Right. Maybe all, it's gonna keep them at his office. This is completely new. I have no idea. We're gonna we're, we're experimenting. We're gonna eat 
what is that called? Zoom donuts. Oh yeah, Zoom donuts. <laughs> Here, it's Greg, good. have a donut you know on me. It's better than eating like re- it's better than eating restreamed donuts. That's right. <laughs> Did you want a candy, Greg? Here. Thank you. I had some the other day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's check out all things pause, Joanne. What do we got going on at oh, the pause? Now I, I'm worrying about not getting donuts. <laughs> um, my dog, um, how come I'm doing ums and you're not supposed to do ums on air? Spotty got adopted on Sunday of last week. So so your foster dog was in your house for all of maybe two weeks? No, it was a, we kept it quiet for a little bit oh. because she was having potty issues. Ah, get a little training to training things to do. Well, for those who aren't able to scan the QR codes, apparently in the chat, it actually puts the link each time I bring that up. So they're, they're, I didn't realize it was doing that either. So it's under a bunch of times for all those times I clicked through. Sorry about that. Uh, but there it is. Uh, they're all up there. And uh, thanks for your support. <laughs> Let me. It's March 11th, a third of the way through the month. And look at that board already. I got a mirror it for you. So dogs and about a dozen or more cats. Thirteen, you're right, 13. and two dogs. The I think she doesn't. said I talked to Sue, who is our director, yesterday, and she said she had two appointments for dogs tomorrow. And if you watch our Facebook page, you will see what dogs. Look at this empty. I come back here and there's no cats to see. Wow, Just this that's... lovely orange one. They've all escaped. No, don't say that. <laughs> Boots. We had that one. Um, this is Tang, not Tom, Tang. Tang. We had someone hidden. I don't know which, which group it was, but they... Um, didn't do a lock correctly and there was a cat loose whoops in the building uh, and there's a lot of places to hide for cats yeah you do have a lot of places to hide there. a lot of little storage areas and stuff so that could be interesting and that and then if they get cats get a little wild when they're free they sing that song wild and free you can't catch me <laughs> someone in there yeah hiding Oh, uh, the, the great room, or whatever you call it. The community room. Community room. This is the one Tom likes me to go in. Let me. It's the kitty cat club. That pause. That's I right. can't. I can't get in it without causing troubles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll start talking about the Packers again. Go in, please. Oh, there she got in. Tom gets nervous when I come in the cages. <laughs> so here we have some close-ups of our cats. Yeah. These nice. cats have been with us for quite a while, so we're hoping, you know, some of them are a little more um, shy. And so they're, you know, it's not like, look, this one's back up already. And I think we said, they're like, why is that lady in our cage and make her get out? That's right. Unless you, she's unless she's you're she's beautiful cat. While we're looking at cats too, Tom, I just want to give you a heads up. Your, your internet's been like 10 out of 10 the whole show. So whatever you did worked. Well, no, I didn't really do anything except I'm back in the teddy bear room. So All right. The power I'm going to stay here in the teddy bear room. We yeah, have last week I just I couldn't keep it on. I don't know oh, what it yeah. was. Now look at this cat. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness, he's beautiful or she. <clears throat> You're gonna fall off. Personality. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you know this cat? Cordelia. Cordelia. She's she's trying to flirt with me so bad she's gonna fall off the bench. Queen right. Cordelia, ready to rule your castle. Bring her home from Halo. 
Oh, that's Cortana. <laughs> she's a bad girl. Oh, she's a bad no, girl. No, oh, and so, oh, me too. <laughs> Don't we all? We should change our names to Cordelia. And only. Very chill meal. Oh. So that's our pause for today. I know I forgot to send. Maybe we'll send Tom, send Greg the picture of Cordelia. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever our pet of the week is, we'll spread the word and let everybody know she's she's a bad girl. She needs a house where she can just be. She's beautiful, clean. but she. She needs a queen. Uh, check out PAWS, www.pawshs.org, 815-299-PAWS. Yeah, I just wanted to mention um, my friend Sarah, who's an avid listener. Her mother died this week. So she was 95, lived a long, good life, but just send sympathy to Sarah because it's, no matter how old you are, it's never easy to lose your mother. No, no, no. no. We had a friend so, of our friend of our daughters lose her grandma this week too. So yes, they say thoughts and prayers sent to Sarah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, friends, we do have a uh, we do have a big number of the week to get to. So let's see if we got that. Our big number this week is one b -b 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 billion, and the answer is cookies or crust. I didn't see it. Oh. Cookies or crust. In our current race to 10, we have Joanne out in front by a score of 7 to 3. I suck at this game, apparently. This is this is not to the year of... If uh, I win, I get a pair of earphones. There we <laughs> That's what we're going for. So... Cookies across. Tom sent me his answer already. Oh, earphones. <laughs> or no, what are they? Cookies. Or you, you can have headphones. I I want the donuts. He wants the donuts. Dan from Tulsa is going to bring me donuts. He already said. So and Sarah with was listening. So she. Bless you, Sarah. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. We, All right, uh, Dan, we... What's your guess? You going with cookies or going with crust? I'm going to go with crust. You're going to go. Oh, I went with crust. cookies. Tom went with cookies today. So maybe Tom so, can take a peek. Someone is going to get themselves a point. The, Way to go, man. Congratulations. <laughs> the Girl Scouts are selling their cookies, you know, right now. Big time. Girl Scout troops sell about 200 million cookies per year. And that brings in about $800 million to fund their activities. The I think I just got a point. The hottest flavor of the year. Billion. I didn't know this. The hottest flavor of the year this year, Raspberry Rally. It's a and new people are, they're selling that even on eBay. Yes. If you can't I mean, get those, it's ridiculous. They're limited edition. They're like thin mints, but instead of mint, they're raspberry. They typically go between. Are they selling cookies in this area? I haven't seen a box of these. I haven't seen one at all anywhere. Uh, and uh, they often sell Maybe out. Maybe you can put that down as your support and send us raspberry cream cookies. <laughs> That'd be fun. The uh, on eBay, people are selling these boxes for up as up to five times as much as they paid for them, according to the New York Times. Five times as much. So they're selling for like uh, twenty-five bucks, thirty bucks. It's crazy. Yeah. So yes, the answer is crust. Joanne gets a point. Yay. The uh, uh, air fryers. We've talked about air fryers before. Americans spent a billion dollars buying air fryers last year. Uh, actually, take that back. Uh, from 2019 until 2022, a billion dollars worth of air fryers were sold. Adam Graves is president of Nestle United States Pizza and Snacks Division. He estimates about 60% of U.S. homes now have the kitchen gadget known as the air fryer. That's we why are restaurants are having such a difficult time. Every <laughs> home air frying their food. Right? We're on our second air fryer already in our house. We used our first one so much we burnt it out. 
Wow. Now, granted, the first I one have, we got... I have an attachment on my Instant Pot. It's a lid that makes it into an air fryer. Nice. Nice. Well, we really enjoy our air fryer. I have an air fryer that I absolutely hate. Do you really? <laughs> oh, my God. It's got a digital readout on it. And I'm like, beep, beep, beep. nope, that's not right. Wait a minute. What am I doing? You know what I do? Shut the lid. Walk away. I go to the <laughs> microwave and I pop it in the microwave. I absolutely hate it. I will not we've, use it. We've really fallen in love with ours. We like ours. I, I love warming up pizza in the thing. because it's an Instant Pot? We don't have an Instant Pot. Hmm. No. With all the gadgets we got in our kitchen, I don't believe that's one that we have. But we like our air fryer. Um, and if you don't have one yet, maybe you tempted to try one out now. So, anywho, eight to three. Congratulations, Joanne. You are way out. Nine to three. Front. It was nine, seven. Nine to three. I thought it was. I thought it was seven to three. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought it was eight to three. I updated the score. Okay. Okay. So at eight, that's where I missed my move. Give me an extra point for just being cute. Oh, <laughs> there you go. And you got to take a point away from me then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. That's our show for today. Uh, thanks to Nikki. Reeves for discussion. We, we, you know what? Let's, let's continue after we let Joanne go. We'll talk about Packers right here. On now, the I've got to get ready to go to the, um, the, the, no, I was going to say discovery center. I've got to time to, play to, see, him, to okay. see the monkeys. You do suck. Wow, monkey you this. Tom and I are going to talk Packers football here. Uh, for those of you who don't want to stick around for that, thanks for watching. And thank you, Nikki Reed from Rock House Kids, for joining us today. That's See you right. next week, Joanne. And my headphones. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye, Joanne. Uh, let's put the graphic up here real quick again for Rock House Kids. Nikki was a great guest. She did wonderful talking all she things was. she was Rock House. and i and i told her and i like i tell most of our guests too i say you know what we're very open-ended as far as what we do here uh at, with our guests so i'm going to ask you a question and honestly you can just talk as much as you want to talk uh plan for about 10 minutes and she took that literally which i love it was perfect oh she was great yeah absolutely i like it when people listen i'm very literal so if you say, well, you talk as long as you want. Okay, good. You have 45 <laughs> minutes. I will take you at your word. Welcome to our first Saturday morning State Line show, show after the show. Today there you go. We're going to be talking Packers because uh, uh, it, it hasn't been official. It made official yet, but it, by all appearances, the Aaron Rodgers era of Green Bay Packers football is, is over. You know, I thought when the Brett Favre era ended, I thought, oh, my God, oh, my God, we're, we're losing one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Because there wasn't as much Brett animosity until after he went, not to the Jets, but after he came back to the North Division with the Minnesota Vikings. That's when people started hating on him. That's when the we, we will never forget you Brent t-shirts <laughs> came out. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. And it's not going to be the case with Aaron Rodgers. But a little bit different scenario. The Aaron Rodgers thing happened a year or two ago, maybe three years ago, when he started this whole wavering roller coaster thing that Brett Favre did. And that is what has made a lot of Packer fans mad. That's what's made me very upset. I just go away. If you're not happy in Green Bay, then we're not happy with you. You either want to be here or you don't. This, this business of, well, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Well, then go away. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure we don't want you if you don't if your heart's not 100 in it. So uh, whether Jordan Love is good, bad, indifferent, I don't know. I don't care because you can't do any worse than eight and nine. Because if you were six and eleven, that's not worse. All it is is it's a better draft choice. If you're if you're two and fifteen, that's not worse. That's an even better draft choice. You didn't make the playoffs at eight and nine. So it doesn't matter if you go eight and nine, seven and ten, six and eleven, blah, blah, blah. Eight and nine didn't make the playoffs. And that's what you're there for, Aaron Rodgers. Now, one one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. His thumb, it's been well documented. I've talked about this many, many times on this show. The thumb 
has been the problem. For five or six weeks, he had a broken thumb. You know what? Try writing your name with a broken thumb. You can't do it. So try it's throwing hard. an NFL football with a broken thumb. It's difficult to do. Try yeah. taking a jump shot with a try batting or golfing with a broken thumb. A broken thumb might as well be a broken arm. Okay. Same difference. So when Aaron Rodgers has a broken thumb and he's still out there playing and overthrowing Alan Lazard, the one who runs meticulous routes and has got palms up like, what are you doing? No. What are you doing on the field with a broken thumb? Because you're too selfish to tell the rest of the team, to tell your coach, to say, you know what, I need to say I got a broken thumb. And then they go ahead and have a bye week, and they come back and they destroyed the Chicago Bears. Well, they didn't destroy them, but they beat them. They beat them. They beat them. They beat them. Um, and then they and then they came back and, and won four in a row, five in a row, and they were poised for – they were three and eight. Three and eight. And they came back and won – uh five in a row they were eight and eight all they had to do was beat the detroit lions and i don't care about detroit and jamal williams and their toughness and all of the stuff that they have now you are playing detroit last game of the season sunday At night home. in lambeau field where they used to go to the playoffs and you dropped a donut on the 50 yard line well not a donut but 21 17 or whatever it was 21 16 20 to 16, I believe is what it was. You don't lose that game. That You're sad. not a playoff team if you lose that game. And I'm kind of glad they didn't make it anyway, because that just made uh, the decision a lot easier to say, bye-bye, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> no, if Aaron Rodgers wasn't such a prima donna, then it wouldn't be so bad. Then I'd hate to see him go. But you know what? Just be done. Just be done. Go to the Jets. <laughs> if he wanted to be there, I'd be thrilled to have him back, but I, it doesn't seem like he does, so it's it's time to go. Uh, um, but if he if he wanted to be there, he's got all off season to get that thumb healthy. I think he could have another two or maybe even three good years in the NFL if he really wanted it. But he's got to want it, and he's got to want to be where he is. And and maybe that'll happen for him in New York. Maybe not. All right. So one other thing I want to say, I am very 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 anti drug. For a lot of reasons. Grew up in a household full of drugs with my brother, blah, blah, blah. Never done a drug in my life. Never done a drug in my life. Yet drugs have affected my life. I do not like drugs. Now, if you want to do it in your own basement, fine. You go right ahead. But, and, and what I'm specifically talking about is this ayahuasca thing. This is a hallucinogenic drink or substance or whatever. You are the star Hall of Fame quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. You're going to go off to South America or Oregon in a cave or whatever. And by the way, it's not a cave. It was a nice little kind of a luxury 300 square foot thing where you had light, probably TV, internet. You had Airbnb internet. without, uh, it was, without lights. Yeah. It was an Airbnb. There you go. <laughs> anyway, so um, I, I don't like drugs. I don't because they affect other people. Um, so for him to go and do this ayahuasca and, oh, yeah, man. I'm getting in touch with my inner self and the rest of the world. You're a moron. You are a moron because you came back a nicer, gentler, kinder Aaron Rodgers. No, you're an NFL quarterback. You better be mean. You better be Tom Brady-esque. You better be Bill Belichick-esque. You better be Jalen Hurts-esque. You better be Josh Allen-esque. You know what I mean? You, you better that do attitude. your yeah. job. Don't come back being nice and this and that. You can be nice. That's no problem. But on the football field, you better want to win. And you can't say, yeah, we lost today, but you know what? The world is great because the birds are singing. <laughs> Sorry. And, and furthermore, why are we glorifying ayahuasca? It is a, it's, they're, what are they, mushrooms or something like that? It's, I'm not exactly sure what they, they are. Other. I don't know and I don't care. I'm not going to look it up. So for those of you who say, why don't you just Google it? Because I don't really care. All I know is it is a mind-altering drug. That's what I know. Now, you can't smoke marijuana. You get drug tested, you're done. You can't take um, steroids. You get drug tested, you're done in every sport. But you can go do ayahuasca. You, you can go ahead and, you know, get in touch with your inner self or whatever it is Aaron Rodgers is doing. And no problem. We're going to glorify it. Why? Because it's Aaron Rodgers. I'm <laughs> sorry. I am so done with him. It isn't even funny. I am 
done with Aaron Rodgers. Now, again, I'll I say he's done with the Packers too. Well, I, I'm glad because so, you know, I, and I and I don't know why the Packers don't make the decision for him. All right, you're done. Well, I know why because they can't release him because they get the cap hit and then they get nothing for him. So yeah. they have to trade him. I get it. They yeah. have to play nice and act like they really care for a while. So I really hope this thing goes. Just be done with it. Rip the Band-Aid off. That's what I want. The <laughs> I Band-Aid forget the guy's name, but there is a, a good wide receiver in on the Jets that doesn't want to be there anymore. So it looks like this wide receiver might fit in with what the Packers want to do and become a part of uh, the whole trade situation. Uh, will, there, will there be draft picks involved? Will there be other talent involved? It's going to be interesting to see how that all falls together. From what, I, from what I gather, there's going to be a number one involved probably for next year. A number three. Yeah, three for this year or a two for this year or something like that. But well, the Packers already have some good draft choices. So and plus, if you get that wide receiver, you can pair him with uh, Romeo Dobbs and with Christian Watson. Yes, you yes, can. That, yes. that would be a very good. And if you got Robert Tunyon, if he sticks around, I'm uh, so very excited for the talent that's on the Packers. Uh, whether it's Love under center or Rodgers, and I'm. I'm my money's on it that it's going to be love next year. I'm excited about the talent that they have. And I, I am too. For those who think now, because the Bears did their trade, they traded in their, their number one pick this week. And so the, the Carolina Panthers gave the Bears a bunch of stuff. For those who think the Packers should get a similar package for Rodgers, <clears throat> just got to remember Rodgers' contract. There's a bunch of money involved, it's not just picks and players. There's Payroll. So the three P's, picks, players, and payroll. You got to remember those things. And Carolina gave up their number nine pick this year, their number 61 pick this year, a first round pick next year, and a second round pick in 2025, plus a high quality wide receiver in DJ Moore to get this year's number one pick in the NFL draft. So they get, they know who they're picking. They know who they want. I'm not sure who it is, but I'm not, they know who it is. Uh, the Jets will take their number one guy, whoever it is. It'll either be Bryce Young or um, uh, oh, uh, CJ Stroud, probably. And there probably. was one other one, too. There was one other one in that mix. It'll be one of those. I'm thinking they're going to go out and just get their franchise quarterback. That's what they're yeah. going to do. So Here's- the Bears definitely scored big. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. And, you know, kudos to uh, to Ryan Poles. Uh, I'm glad for them. Yeah. I, Still think they're a couple of years away, and I think they even know they're a couple of years away. But this is a good foundation, and next year they can build on that with a couple of more draft choices. And they stuff. got their guy. They got Justin Fields. He's good. If he stays healthy, he could be a good a long time. Uh, uh, yeah, they got to stop running him so much. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, stop creating designed runs. You're already going to get ten to twelve runs just because the play breaks down. And with that pathetic offensive line that they have or have had, they're probably going to be better next year. That's why you get those runs. And the designed runs, you're kind of expecting it if you're a halfway decent defensive uh, coordinator, halfway decent middle linebacker. You're kind of, you got somebody spying on him. So you're going to get it. And when you're expecting it, that's when they lower the boom. That's when Aaron, uh, when Justin Fields gets hurt or any quarterback for that matter. That's why Josh Allen, if he keeps up for Buffalo, if he keeps up with him. He'll be, yeah, Cam Newton, perfect example. Five years, six years, done. MVP, Superman. Allen, yes, Josh Allen will be out of the league in about, or he'll be a backup in about five years if he keeps up this. You don't take on contact like that. Not yeah. in the NFL, not with a 220 pound uh, linebacker who just wants to tear your head off. One other thing about Aaron Rodgers that you didn't mention age. He's also 39. Yeah, yeah. Your number one draft choice is potentially a 22-year-old or a 23-year-old that you're going to have for the next 10 or 12 or 15 years. Could be the franchise, the face of your franchise. Yeah, so, yeah you got to keep that in, in in mind as well. So I, I, think the, I think the Packers get this wide receiver, and I'm sorry, I forget the guy's name from the Jets. They might get a pick or two, but then there's going to be the – payroll part of it where they're gonna have to say okay jets you're gonna have to pay this part of aaron's salary we'll we'll cover this part of it and- woody johnson will do it he's the owner of the jets and he is committed he is committed like- we haven't gotten a very good coach robert sala very good coach he was a d coordinator for uh, san francisco two years ago so um he is very committed to winning he gets aaron Rodgers out there with a good offensive line a good running game a good receiving core 
Uh, and maybe Alan Lazard follows Aaron Rodgers to uh, the Jets. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, and they got know, a great defense. So they, they, they're they poised. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they, yeah. they got some money. They're willing to spend it. And that defense is really, really good. So I agree the Jets will make a run next year with Aaron Rodgers. I agree. But you cannot be. This isn't your year if you're the Jets. I hate to break it to you. You're not going to make the Super Bowl this year, this, this coming year. It may be the year after. If you go 11-6 and six next year and you make a fairly good run in the playoffs and you show up and you beat the first team, you beat the, the Raiders, you beat the Broncos, you, whoever, you beat somebody in the first round of the playoffs and you move on and now you're one game from the, from the AFC Championship game, now you've got reason to celebrate. Now you can look towards next year saying, we have a legitimate shot. But you're also going up against Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson if he decides to play. Um, uh, uh, maybe, maybe a rejuvenated uh, Russell Wilson in Denver, Justin Herbert in San Diego. Uh, who else? Who else you got in the AFC? There's a, there's one I missed. Did I say Patrick Mahomes? I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> there are some great quarterbacks. There's some great talent yeah. out there. There is, there, there, there is definitely. So. There's still reports uh, coming through even this morning how the Jets are restructuring contracts of their current players so they can put some more cap space in so there's movement going on the draft is going to be really really interesting and fun to watch so uh i'll be curious yes. to see what way which way the packers go with their draft picks too uh that there's a big tight end i think out of georgia that people are getting excited about and if he lasts till the ninth pick the packers might just pick up that big dude or mike mayer from uh from uh Notre Dame. Notre Dame. I would love to have him. He is so good. By the way, you know who else restructured their contract about four or five years ago? Mr. Tom Brady. Uh -huh. He took his money. And guess what the result was? A Super Bowl. He won a Super Bowl. Yeah. For Tampa Bay because Gronkowski came back after Gronkowski had retired. Uh, there was money. There was enough money. And I don't think Gronkowski took 30 million either. I think he probably took 10 million or whatever. Um, that's the way it's done. That's called being a, dare I say, hope you're listening, Aaron, a team player. Oh, that's what team no. player does. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is my problem. If you want to get to the very nitty gritty, the very meat and potatoes of why I don't like Aaron Rodgers, not a team player. That's my problem with him. I'm going to go off and do my own thing, and then I'm going to come back and complain that you guys aren't doing the running the right routes or anything like that. Well, hmm. Maybe you shouldn't have done your ayahuasca. Maybe you should have been here getting to know Christian Watson, who, by the way, is a bona fide stud. He's going to be a star. The first seven games of the season were a wash because Aaron Rodgers wouldn't incorporate him into the offense. And then the minute he got three touchdowns, whoa, hey, where's this guy been? I don't know, Aaron, you tell us. <laughs> uh, then he, uh, he ends up with, I want to say he ended up with 12 or 13 touchdowns. You know what? You fleshed that out. That's about 18 or 19 touchdowns for the year. Had he been able to work with Aaron in the offseason and that be injury, in the number two. That injury. That? The injury. Oh, that you're was, right. You're right. You're right. He did have a little bit of an injury. Yeah. So it you was are, a good point. But uh, all right. Well, hey, um, I do have to get to an appointment. So I want to shut things down here. But All right. Sounds good. I'm just going to sit here in my teddy bear office and talk to myself. You got 10 out of 10 on your on your network connection. So, so Tom, what do you think about the Packers? Well, Tom, here's what I say. <laughs> I'm self-entertaining, you know. We're in radio. We've been doing that our, our whole adult lives. <laughs> yeah, we have, haven't we? Talking in closets and wondering what people wondering what we're saying. Well, turn it. Wait, you used the term adult. Are you talking about me? No. <laughs> Somewhat adult. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll agree with that. Adult-ish. I'm still, I'm still in high school mentally. Hey, remember you change the world when you help one person. Be a blessing to someone this week. We'll meet you back here next week for another Saturday morning. Stay loud show. Bye, buddy. Go Packers. Go Packers. <laughs>